I'm just gonna say it. L.A. Reid is a predator. You calling 18, 19 year old girls in your office and soliciting sexual favors? Yes, that was happening. And any label, television show, anybody that hires him, you are hiring a predator. L.A. Reid is a scary man. He's one of the most powerful people in the music industry, and L.A. Reid has used that power to violate people. He would harass employees and end careers if he didn't get what he wanted. L.A. Reid has even ended artists' careers because their managers wouldn't sleep with him. He's a part of the problem in Hollywood, and he needs to be exposed. So let's get into it. L.A. Reid is a big-time music executive and record producer, and he also seems like a creep because he's used his status to take advantage of many people. He supposedly left his position at Epic Records because of allegations of sexual harassment. Reports claim that L.A. Reid was ousted from his job nearly six years in after a co-worker accused him of putting his hand up her shirt at a holiday party in front of other people. L.A. Reid, you guys have been waiting a few days to hear Joe's thoughts. So on Thursday, we found out that he abruptly left his position as CEO and chairman of Epic Records. Uh, Sony didn't say much at first. Two days later, they issued a very, very brief statement just saying uh, L.A. Reid will be leaving the company. Now we're finding out that there are assault allegations against him from multiple people who worked in the company. Now, Sony learned about these allegations because one of his employees actually wrote a letter. An attorney representing one of L.A. Reid's female assistants sent a letter to Sony's legal counsel regarding the harassment that this assistant had faced for a daily basis over a year. L.A. Reid was also accused of asking his assistant while they were on a business trip to lie down in bed with him and give him a hug, which no employer should be laying in bed with their employee. That's so weird. Also, they shouldn't be commenting on their appearance. Well, in that letter, she accuses him of making comments about her clothing and her appearance, as well as propositions that caused her embarrassment and distress and made it impossible for her to continue working at that label. It looks like this employee wanted probably a settlement or was threatening legal action. So I think that this employee was probably paid off. And this letter is legit because multiple outlets have seen it. So in this situation, that assistant fought for Sony CEO to read this letter and learn who LA Reid really is. But not a lot of people are this lucky. And honestly, this assistant went through hell dealing with executives who were essentially telling her, you're going to lose your job if you continue doing this or speak Speaking on L.A. Reid. L.A. Reid obviously, and it appears that he had a problem or an obsession with and not being able to separate from his work. It bled into even people that directly worked for him. He got fired from Epic Records because his female assistant wrote a letter that got to his boss. And when they read that and given, of course, multiple allegations that are being hushed up and been quieted over the years, they said, damn, we got to get rid of this guy. And he has a point because once you leave your job, you can assume that you can get a job somewhere else. But L.A. Reid, he has this type of power to really blacklist you from entertainment, which is probably why she kept herself anonymous and probably handled this privately because she doesn't want to miss out from other job opportunities. But Sony put out a statement saying that they are not allowing culture like this in the company. And that's part of L.A. Reid leaving the business. And it's not just assistants who are dealing with this artist are dealing with this as well. Latoya Rodriguez, known as Toya, found some success on the charts in 2001 with her single, I Do. And that's all about what we heard from her because her career fell off quickly. As of 2022, Toya hasn't put out anything new and some interesting information has come out on why her career stalled. Well, it wasn't Toya who was actually preyed on. It was her representation. And because her representative didn't... I guess, comply with what he wanted, Toya had to suffer. She actually claims that he R-worded her. Her name is Drew Dixon, and she was working as an executive at a record label when L.A. Reid began making moves on her and unwelcome advances. Reports claim that L.A. Reid would turn cold when Drew denied his unwanted overtures, which reportedly included invitations to late-night catch-ups at his hotel. She actually claims that when she did deny his invitations, she was worried for her artists like Toya because he was 
budgeting it. L.A. Reid did end up ending Toya's career, and it's all because Drew didn't give him what he wanted. L.A. Reid is now my boss, and all of a sudden it was like, wear skirts and heels every day, Drew, to work. I started wearing jeans and Birkenstock clogs because I knew he hated those. Okay. Um, you know, there's even like, it's not even in the movie. I signed this artist, Toya, from St. Louis. She had this record called I Do. It was the number one Sherbin record in the country. Sherbin, okay? I heard that, that language a right? long time. Crossover <laughs> urban. an album that was dope. L.A. loved it, and he kept saying, come to my hotel after you finish in the studio and listen to the album. And I was already knowing what that was. So I would just always, like, pretend I didn't get his message or be like, yeah, uh, let me hit you back. And they're just like, wouldn't. And there was, like, a meeting one day at Arista where all the promotion people were psyched to talk about Toya because I do was testing so well nationally and how we were going to break her. And then Ellie Reed literally looks down the table at me. He's like, everybody take out your pens, draw lines through Toya. I listened to her album last night in my hotel room. And he like looked at me and I hated it. Honestly, kudos to Drew for standing true for herself and standing up for herself. But it sucks that artists like Toya, who had so much potential, had to suffer as well. And I think it's important that she keeps mentioning Toya and the fact that her album never made it because L.A. Reid killed it because she did not want to go to his hotel room, which probably a great choice. She wrote on Twitter, I'm calling L.A. Reid a predator because he pressured me to become intimate with him when I was VP of another label. When I refused, he wouldn't let me sign Kanye West or John Legend, he buried the album that I executive produced on with an artist named Toya. She was quoted saying that his mentality was that he has the power. If you want access, then you have to sleep with him or I'll be really mean to you the next day and there will be consequences. What's terrible about this industry is that it happens so often. Drew also has a story about Russell Simmons, who we've spoken about before. At 24, she just landed her dream job at Def Jam Records when he started harassing her and he would constantly show his erect you know what to her without her wanting it at a restaurant he allegedly pushed her into a closet and attempted to kiss her and at one staff meeting he even asked her to come and sit on his lap Ugh. she said that she was too scared to confront him because he was so powerful she actually told one of her male co-workers that if she ever buzzes him and doesn't pick up then don't call her back just come and open the door because that means russell's in there and he's whipping out his private parts. So she even like made a code with the other employees to try to protect herself from when these men would prey on her. Other people have spoken out about Ellie Reed because it's hard to ignore this behavior. Joe Budden shared that Ellie Reed liked to call 18 year olds into his office and ask for intimate favors. He says that this speaks to the issue of powerful men and how they're able to come and go as they please. And I'm glad he is speaking out against this because we rarely hear other men, you know, in the industry calling out this behavior and talking about how gross it is. I mean, imagine being in an office space and seeing young 18 year olds like going to his office and just knowing what's going on in there. I'm just gonna say it. Ellie Reed is a predator. These rumors were circulating to Def Jam. There was an assistant, multiple assistants at Def Jam that said L.A. Reed liked to call underage girls in his office. Underage? Well, 18. Okay. I mean, that's of age. That's legal. Right. So, But you calling 18, 19 year old girls in your office and soliciting sexual favors? Yes, that was happening. That was happening. I don't think this is a secret to people in the music business. He's absolutely right. It's definitely not a secret in the music business. And we've seen, I mean, I just made a video about Russell Brand and he had so many managers and people working at networks who protected him and his bad behavior. So why is this so common? And how do people like L.A. Reid continue to succeed? Joe, L.A. is going to be L.A. This is L.A. Reid. I think this is who he is. And any label television show, anybody that hires him, you are hiring a predator and you should do your due diligence. What camera's on? This one, do your due diligence to check it. L.A. Reid has been pretty lucky as far as being exposed. I haven't seen like a large campaign against him. And you know that one employee, she settled with Sony. So I wonder how many private settlements are really there. I would like somebody to have to answer for his behavior at Epic, Sony, 
You can't just put this out. You can't just because these companies, they just want to rid themselves of liability. It said that they did launch an investigation. So maybe there's more coming. We haven't heard about that. L.A. Reid, I'm sure there's a Bill Cosby list somewhere. And also, I think they're trying to be they're trying to be real careful with it because they know a lawsuit's coming. As I just mentioned, there are cases where he can settle, pay off these people, and they essentially are silent. It's part of the agreement. Ellie Reed and a previous employer quietly settled a handful of sexual harassment complaints brought by female employees for over a more than five year stretch. After each of the prior complaints and its negotiated resolution, Ellie Reed promised to straighten up his act, but he never did. So he would get in trouble with Sony, they would go and pay off these people, and then he would agree to act better next time, but then he never changed. Ellie Reed spends a lot of money. He spends a lot of money. Now, with the problem with that is that when you're paying for some sh that you shouldn't be paying for with company dollars. Now, there's a guy from Arista Records, he used to work at Arista like in 2001. He was having some type of celebratory party for like his coworker, and they had it at a hotel, like probably like a banquet hall, like within the hotel. And they go there, and apparently the, the coworker says, L.A. Reid comes up to him and say, yo, Playboy, take this key card and go upstairs. I got a present waiting for you in a hotel room. So he goes upstairs, and it's a thotty. L.A. Reid allegedly paid for an escort that this person could have with. So not only is he, you know, doing what he wants when he wants to do it, but he's also hiring people to do these things with employees, which is just so incredibly unprofessional. TLC also has a story with L.A. Reid because the former manager who goes by Pebbles claims that one of the members of the group were having an affair with her husband, who's L.A. Reid. So one of the members of the group is named Chili. Her nickname is Chili. And she was supposedly hooking up with Pebbles' husband. Pebbles admits that she never actually caught the two in the act, but she told Wendy Williams that she absolutely believed that they were sleeping together behind her back. Quote, I suspected a couple of things, but I didn't want to believe them at that time. For years, I didn't want to believe that because they were like daughters to me. Some people try to put this on Chili, but it's really not her fault. She was young, her career depended on this man, and yeah, it probably didn't feel good hooking up with her manager's husband, but I have no doubt in my mind that he probably went on to her because look at his pattern. She said she made a very particular statement that, that <clears throat> Chili slept with Ellie Ask Reed. me if I believe that. Do you believe that Chili slept Absolutely. with Ellie Reed? Absolutely. I didn't believe it then because I didn't want to believe it. I loved my husband fiercely, and I loved them fiercely. They were like daughters to me. Bottom line, I don't have a reason to lie about that. I didn't believe it and wouldn't for years. But I have my reasons to say absolutely. What reasons do you have? I cannot tell you some of them. Tell me one. Uh, I just know it. It happened. Again, I don't think it's Chili's fault, but another story involving Pebbles also involves Paula Abdul. Because I guess that Ellie Reed and Paula had a relationship. I don't think it was intimate, but Pebbles was suspicious because, I mean, look at who she's married to. And at one point, they were hanging out, Paula and Ellie Reed, in his apartment, and they were on the balcony and he heard a knock at the door and there was also a phone call from Pebbles. So as soon as he opened the door and saw her, he decided to smash all of the glass furniture inside of his home so that he could distract her from the fact that Paula was there and they were hanging out together. It, it's really weird. He says it was like slow motion, tearing crap up. I smiled and I loved it. She never looked at Paula, who was trembling in fear. Reportedly, Pebbles was a jealous wife, and it kind of makes sense to me because her husband was a cheating man. I guess at one point he had to convince Pebbles to stop being jealous of Whitney Houston because Whitney, you know, is a big star. She's intimidating. And L.A. Reid was very close to her, but he had to, he admitted that he had to tell Pebbles not to worry about it in his book. I'm not entirely sure why he would really include this, besides making make Pebbles look bad and to use Whitney's name. But yeah, I don't think that he had a super intimate relationship with her. He would just bring her up to the hotel room and hang out with them and uh, his wife Pebbles would end up showing up in a fit of rage. And the last thing I want to reiterate is that this is a problem in Hollywood. There are so many creeps. We talked about Puff Diddy, you know, P Diddy and his flavor camp. Well, L.A. Reid actually sent Usher to that flavor camp. So he's the reason why Usher was put in that situation where, you know, <laughs> 
P. Diddy did things to him. If you haven't seen that video, definitely go and check it out. But yeah, L.A. Reid is a big part of the problem. And we need to start at the top if we're going to tear down this mess. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. And I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye, guys.